today you're going to have the pleasure of watching me work like a dog. But no, seriously, I kind of enjoying this uh, early spring tidy up. Now you've got to be careful. If you get out on your flower beds too early, where the soil is too, too wet, you can compact the soil, which does a lot of harm, uh, especially for the rooting of plants. Now this bed here, this is what I call a gravel garden. It drains very well. And stepping on gravel does not tend to compact the soil at all. So I can work on this bed a bit earlier. Now, some of you might have cut everything back in the fall, but this garden here has lots of ornamental grasses that look great in the winter. I tend to leave a lot of kind of perennials up because the birds can use them as a food source. And in the early part of spring, a lot of the kind of fluffy things can be used for nesting in uh, bird nests, of course. Now, typically what I do is I go over with my electric hedge trimmer, cut everything down, but I'm very uh, wearisome to go near the euphorbias because they have a, a poisonous sap, which can be very irritating. But first, before I get started, vital ingredient. If you're working on the ground and being close to the plants here is actually much, much easier. Knee pads are essential, makes the job enjoyable. The euphorbia is a wonderful plant. The poisonous sap is great because the deer won't eat it. It um, irritates them. It's not gonna kill them or anything like that. And this is the euphorbia here. And I'm gonna cut and just show you. Just takes a second. We're just gonna wait. Uh, I don't know if you can see, there's like a white sap beginning to come out and that can be quite irritating. And the reason I'm trimming them right back is there's lots of new shoots right back at the crown. These get a bit leggy and unpleasant looking. And if I cut them back now, the plant will look much nicer. And just got to bear in mind that these do see themselves. You may not want them all over the place. Like this one here, I'm going to take out. So here we go, one of the new lithium powered. I have to say the lithium batteries are far superior than the old ones. Um, hedge trimmers are great because they tend not to get clogged up as much as a chainsaw. I'm about three, three inches above the ground. Just making sure I've got that all done. Now these are a little tricky because this is really a woody shrub but not quite as hardy in our area. So I'm gonna just check to see how far back there's been dyed back. Again, you can see that's all brown. So there's no way it's gonna shoot from these stems. I'm gonna try one more inside, pull it back a little bit. And oh, that's, that's pretty, pretty brown. So basically it's killed to ground level, which isn't unusual. Sometimes that happens to butterfly bushes as well. Um, this one I'm going to cut about three or four inches and if there is anything that's alive above ground it's going to shoot from there. If not, I'm afraid it's going to have to reshoot from the ground like it does every year. Now these I'm going to get down low because these are low grasses. There's a little fescue here, just give it a trim. And here Now on the side of me here, we've got some little sedum. Again, we left these up because these are pretty in the winter. And they're starting to rot away now, so really you don't even need to cut them. And I can see the new shoots coming through. And right at the end here, that's caught a lot of the leaves. This is one of the newer ornamental onions. And you can, I'm just brushing it out of the way. You can see it doesn't even need cutting back. You can see the new growth coming up. These onions are as tough as nails and they have, of course, that pungent onion aroma that keeps the animals away from it all. Well, how about that? My next job though is the hard work. I've got to pull everything together, pack it away, and then think about replacing some of the gravel. Now, in terms of raking, um, if you're very aggressive, you can damage the tops of plants, which again, in early spring, you don't want to do that. So what I'm doing is I'm just pulling gently away, making piles of debris. There's still lots of little pieces, so a few leaves and things, and that's where the blower comes in handy. Okay, what I got on here is 1B stone, crushed stone. 
Uh, you could get river stone, which is a round shape. I like the crushed stone. It supports your weight a little bit better. Uh, the round stone tends to push into the soil a bit more. Um, I'm just going to look for patches where I think the gravel coating is thin and just carefully layer it on. So gravel gardens, there are lots of uses. Uh, it's a relatively easy way to grow plants successfully. And I didn't even mention about the propagation value. Any of the uh, seeds that from the plants that land in the gravel and work their way down, you'd be surprised how many germinate. So it gives you an endless source of new plants for your garden. So I hope you enjoyed and see you soon when the sun keeps coming out like this.